Welcome to our special service of hope and healing here at Central United Methodist Church. I'm Lanny Lancaster and I'm one of the pastors on staff here. And we're so glad that you could join with us tonight as we look to Christ for hope and healing. 2 Corinthians 1 verses 3 through 5 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all consolation, who consoles us in all our affliction, so that we may be able to console those who are in any affliction with the consolation with which we ourselves are consoled by God. For just as the sufferings of Christ are abundant for us, so also our consolation is abundant through Christ. Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. We come, Lord Jesus, bringing our hurts, our worries, and our fears. We come seeking relief from pain, anxiety, loneliness, and despair. With the psalmist of the scriptures, we say, O oh Lord, you are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. Give heed to my cry, for I am low. We come tonight to rest in God. this time we bring the light of Christ. Let us pray. God of love and understanding, we gather here this evening to confront our pain in the midst of the world's celebration. Help us to know that you are present with us in all of our moods and feelings and seasons. Grant us a taste of the hope, peace, joy, and love that you promise to all of your people through the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ in whose name we lift this prayer. Amen. Let's hear those comforting words of Jesus once again from Matthew 11, verses 28 through 30. Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Dear friends, I've always found this scripture to be one of the most comforting one of the most comforting things that Jesus ever said, come to me, come to me. It is a sacred promise, an invitation to open our hearts for the healing that Christ wants to bring to you and me. The healing that God brings to us because God formed us with his own hands. He crafted each of us individually with our unique gifts. He knew us even before we were conceived. God walks with us every single step of our journeys, even through the dark valleys of death, loss, and pain. Come to me, Jesus says to you specifically. This very moment, my friend, Jesus is saying to you, Come to me, come to me, all who are weary and 
carrying heavy burdens this holiday season. Come to me all who feel like weeping instead of singing this challenging year. Come to me when the pain of grief and the sense of loss is overwhelming. Come to me when you miss someone so much that you feel like you cannot even pray. Come to me. What a beautiful, loving, healing invitation Jesus gives to us. But sometimes we wonder, how do I come to Jesus in the midst of grief, loss, or pain? I want to share some suggestions with you today of how you can come to Jesus if you are experiencing grief, loss, or pain this year. First of all, we can be honest about our feelings, our experience of grief, loss, or pain. We can be honest with Jesus. We can share our real, true feelings with Jesus. For some of us, it could be really helpful to just sit down and write a letter to Jesus. Have you ever done that? When we write a letter to Jesus, it becomes a form of prayer. Just start out, dear Jesus, and then really tell him how you feel. Are you angry that your loved one is gone? Tell Jesus. Are you feeling empty because that place in your life that they feel is impossible to feel any other way? Tell Jesus. Write out your real feelings with God. And this is a very holy prayer. Remember, Jesus can hold it all. He desperately wants you and me to open up to him because it builds our relationship. It deepens our trust in Christ. It helps us go deeper with him. Another possibility is to share your feelings with someone else, another person. Some of us are external processors. I know I am. In other words, it's hard for us to get those hard feelings that are deep down out until we speak them out loud to another person, a trusted friend, pastor, or counselor. If you are like that, I invite you to seek out someone you can trust. Ask Jesus to help you find who that would be. This can be a real blessing. And I found in my life, that Christ sends incredible people to share the journey with. Another great idea is to help someone else. This is one of the most powerful things we can do when we ourselves are experiencing grief, loss, or pain because we were made for each other. We are not meant to suffer alone. No person is an island. As wise spiritual teachers tell us, Sometimes we are in such deep pain that our own minds can feel like a dungeon. But when we turn our attention to someone else, to their needs, their suffering, and we seek to love them and minister to them, something truly miraculous happens. We can forget about our own problems, even for a little while, and we can actually tap into real joy even when we are in pain how is this possible because this is the meaning of our very existence we were created to love god and love other people when we do that we live out the image of god in a, each of us we reflect the light of christ and it gives us joy because this is what we were created. This is what we were structured and gifted to do, to love others. One last suggestion. Sometimes it's just good to sit down and have a good cry. Yes. I have a particular Christmas song that always reminds me of my beloved dad who died many years ago. The first Christmas that I had without him, this song was playing on the radio and all of a sudden, I felt all these intense feelings of grief rise up. And I kind of fought it because that's what us guys are taught to do with grief. 
But finally I released and I just let the tears come. And you know what I realized? All those tears are just a sign of how much I love my dad. How much his presence is still a blessing in my life. You see, we Christians confess the communion of the saints. And that means that we know that our loved ones who died in the Lord are with the Lord now and they are not gone. They are in what the Bible calls the great cloud of witnesses around us all the time cheering us on. And the best part is that one great and glorious day we will be reunited with our loved ones who died in the Lord. And we will experience eternal communion with them and Jesus forever. So if that understanding brings tears sometimes, let it be. Did you know that the Bible tells us in Psalm 56 verse 8, it says that the psalmist said to the Lord, you have kept count of my tossings. Put my tears in your bottle. Are they not in your record? Sisters and brothers, this means that God knows our hearts. He knows our grief. He knows our pain. Don't ever forget that when Jesus went to the tomb of his beloved friend Lazarus, when he saw Lazarus' sister, another friend of his, weeping, he also was moved to tears. Jesus weeps with us when we grieve the loss of loved ones. He knows, and he says, come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Sisters and brothers, tonight I invite you to simply lean back into the loving arms of Jesus, to share your grief with him, and find rest for your souls. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Tonight we will light the candles of the Advent wreath in remembrance of our loved ones. We light these candles for our own needs. We light one for our grief, one for our courage, and one for our memories, and one for our love. The first candle we light represents our grief. We recognize and own the pain of losing our loved ones, of dreams that go unfulfilled, of hopes that evaporate in despair. The second candle represents our courage. It symbolizes the courage to confront our sorrow, to comfort each other, to share our feelings honestly and openly with each other, and to dare to hope in the midst of pain. The third candle represents our memories. For the times we laughed together, cried together, were angry at each other or overjoyed with each other, we light this candle for the memories of caring and joy we shared together.
The fourth candle represents our love, the love we have given and the love we have received, the love that has gone unacknowledged and unfelt, and the love that has been shared in times of joy and sorrow. We pause now to remember our loved ones, their names, their voices, their faces. We hold them before God, giving thanks for their lives in ours. And we trust that through Christ they are still with us in the great cloud of witnesses, in the communion of the saints. Let us pray together silently, naming our loved ones in our hearts before God now. Comforting God, wrap us in your presence in this time of remembrance. With the light of these candles, help us find your light, a light that will guide us day by day step by step, as we try to live life fully and wholly. We cherish the special ways in which our loved ones have touched us. We thank you for the gift their lives have been to us. Now comfort us, encourage us, empower us, console us. In the name of the one who overcame even death, to give us eternal life. Amen. Thank you for joining us tonight, and we pray for God's comfort and rest for you, sisters and brothers. Receive now this blessing. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the tender love of God, and the comforting and consoling fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore.